Welcome back, everyone. Although Mount Ruapea, whose crater burst at around 11 yesterday morning, it was last night's 6 o'clock news pictures that gave most of us the first inkling of just how powerful a moderate lahar can be. But one person who knew exactly what to expect was volcanologist Vern Melville. Manville. For the past five years, he's been analysing data from the mountain, trying to predict how big the deluge along the world's most active lahar path would be. It turned out he was bang on the money. Simon Shepherd caught up with a tired but very happy Vern Manville. It's a, it's a huge relief to have it finally over and done with. Uh, at least the waiting is over, but now the real work of analysing the data and figuring out exactly what happened and making the scientific most of it really begins. But what was it like yesterday when you know, the warning system went off for you? Uh, I actually found out about midday, 12 o'clock, about an hour after the warning system was activated because I wasn't near my mobile when it went off and then I had to arrange babysitter because I've got a young family. Docs describe this lahar as moderate, but from the pictures we saw last night, that was a lot of water. Yeah, um, the Department of Conservation estimates that 1.3 million cubic metres of water is released from the Crater Lake. That's about enough to fill up the Westpac Trust Stadium in Wellington about one and a half times. One and a half times for the cake tin? Yeah, <laughs> yep. Quite a lot of water perched at the top of a volcano two and a half kilometres above sea level. So there's a lot of potential energy in there. The Department of Conservation has been singing your praises. They said that this lahar has come to pass as you predicted. Uh, more or less. Uh, the size of the lahar is about what I predicted. I believe it was between the largest 1995 lahar and the 1953 Tangiwai lahar. So it's somewhere in that bracket, maybe towards the upper end of that range. Um, I did a lot of number crunching to come up with those figures and maybe I got lucky. Maybe you got lucky, but maybe you made your own luck with the amount of modelling that you did. Yeah, um, I've been working on this um, it's probably been the dominant thing I've been doing for the last four years. So uh, things have evolved and uh, you've, you've aged along with the uh, Lahar? I, I, I've, I've, <laughs> I've, I've grown up with it. Um, I actually arrived in Taupo in 95, the week that Ruapehu started erupting. So my introduction to volcanoes sure. was stopping on the desert road and washing ash off my windscreen. And now I've come full circle to the, you know, you want a helicopter up here now? closing the book on the 95 or 96 eruptions. But that's what it is, isn't it? I mean, the, the, the dam was as a result of the 95 yeah, the dam eruptions. Yeah, the it? dam was in place by the 95 eruptions. The lake was expelled. The 96 eruptions threw out what little lake there was again, topped up the dam by another metre, metre and a half, and then we've been waiting ever since for it to fill up. And when you got to the actual crater lake itself, was there much left? Um, only the top 10% of the volume of the lake has come off. The lake's dropped about 6.3 metres um, from its high stand that it re probably reached over the weekend. 90% um, of the volume is left in the crater basin because the Tefra Dam was just perched on the rim. The lake itself is probably 100, 200 metres deep. So there's a, an awful lot of water still up there. Does this mean we are in danger of having another lahar in the short term? Um, there is always a residual lahar risk at Ruapehu because it's an active volcano and eruptions can happen and explosively eject the crater lake water which generates lahars. Um, the dam breakout lahar risk is now zero. There is no longer a dam there. The rock rim looks pretty stable to me uh, but we'll obviously be doing some work on that to confirm. But are we looking like a, a 10 year period before we have this kind of thing again? Or? Oh, that, that's a $64,000 question is when the next eruption will be. Uh, historically, over the last hundred years or so, um, eruptions have recurred uh, on a sort of three to ten year time span. You, in 95, 96, obviously they were in consecutive years, but there was quite a considerable gap between 95 and the previous eruption. So it, it's quite un unpredictable. It's like asking a politician when the next election is. He can't tell you when it's going to be or who's going to win it three years out, but as you get closer and closer to the event, you look at the opinion polls, we look at the seismometers and the gas chemistry and the water chemistry in the lake and deformation trends, and they're like opinion polls for us. They give us a feel what's going on under the volcano. Nicely put, Simon Shepherd speaking with volcanologist Dr Vern Manville.